time about how my crazy neighbors ate my dog. By the way, this is an anonymous story from a follower. So me and my boyfriend had just bought our first house together. Everyone welcomed us to the new neighborhood, but we didn't have neighbors to the right side of us yet. No one was in the house yet. So about six months into us living there, we get our brand new neighbors. So obviously, since we've been there for six months, we introduce ourselves to them. So our neighbors were these two grown men. They didn't even have any furniture in their house, so that kind of stood out. We thought later they'd get moving trucks and move in some furniture, but they never did. So me and my boyfriend had a Pomeranian named Chippy. Sometimes we would let our dog go outside to use the restroom, and every time I went outside to get the dog, I noticed our neighbors were just staring at me. So one day I let Chippy go outside to use the restroom, and when I was ready to bring him back in, I couldn't find him anywhere. So I'm looking around, I'm literally looking everywhere, and he is nowhere to be found. So I go back into the house to tell my boyfriend, and then a few minutes later we get a knock on the door. And it's both of our neighbors like, hey, we found your dog in your front yard. Like for part two. Part two story time about how my crazy neighbors ate my dog. By the way, this is an anonymous story. So after our neighbors bring by our dog, we started to get suspicious for sure. Things just weren't adding up at all. So one day a kid across the street saw our dog Chippy and wanted to play with him. So I said, of course, only if you make sure nothing happens. Obviously, I didn't think anything would happen. That kid loved our dog. So as the kid is playing with our dog Chippy, the neighbors are looking out of the window watching him. So they come outside of their house and they go, hey, can I play with him? And the boy says, yeah, but you can't let anything happen to him. Then our neighbor goes, oh, of course not. I play with Chippy all the time. The boy then goes, okay, well, I have to go home now. Make sure Chippy gets back to his owner. He says, of course, nothing's going to happen to Chippy. So the boy goes back into his house and our neighbors bring Chippy inside of their house. So after about an hour or so, I go outside to see what's going on. Chippy is missing yet again. Like for part three. Part three story time about how my neighbors ate my dog. So once I go outside to look for my dog, I notice he's not there and neither was the kid. So I go to the kid's house across the street to see if maybe he brought the dog home. Then he says, no, I gave him to your neighbors. He said he'd give him back to you. My stomach dropped because I do not trust my neighbors. So I go to my neighbor's house and I'm banging on the door and they don't answer. So I go get my boyfriend. Then he comes out and he's banging on the door demanding that they come out. They never answer. So we call the police. Once the police are called, they get there and they bang on the door and then they answer. The police noticed that they had no furniture and the lights were off, so they became suspicious. A second police officer pulls up and he claims that he recognizes them. And he tells me that they're two homeless men. They don't even actually live there. They broke in. As they were looking around in the house, they found Chippy's collar and they also found remains of a dog, meaning they ate our dog. That explains why they kept watching him. They were arrested on many charges. Story time of how my uncle got cremated alive. So my uncle was a funeral home director in New York. And due to the extreme amount of increased deaths due to the pandemic, he ended up having to work at least 12 to 16 hours a day. So of course, almost every single day he was extremely exhausted. So my uncle went into the crematorial, laid down on one of the stretchers and took a nap. And while my uncle was sleeping, a coworker mistook him for a 52 year old man who died due to respiratory issues. The coworker then rolled the stretcher right into the crematory. Before his coworker could notice the mistake, my uncle was already exposed to temperatures ranging between 14 to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. Then within seconds, he was reduced to ashes. There is currently an open investigation around his death. So there you have it, kids. If you work in a funeral home, never take a nap in the crematory on one of the stretchers. Story time about how this one girl bullied me so bad she tried to beat me up, but guess what? The joke was on her because my sister beat her up. I was in 8th grade and I was bullied pretty badly, but this one girl in particular who didn't like me would make my life miserable. This girl was in 10th grade and I was in 8th grade at the time. I didn't defend myself at the time. I was really just scared of everything and everyone because I got bullied so much. And my sister knew that, which is why she was always looking out for me. She always had my back. So the bully, let's call her Jackie. Jackie started leaving me mean notes in my locker. And at the time, I guess I didn't really know if it was her. It could have been many people since I got bullied by many people and the kids in my class would group around me whenever I would go to open my locker just to see my reaction when I would read the mean things she left in the notes so for example she would make fun of my acne and my big lips but it got so much worse one day I was walking down the hallway and she comes up right behind me and spills fake blood all over my back making it look like I had my period I was mortified and she did this in front of everyone when we were on break then in front of everyone she says that she's gonna beat me up at lunch and that I better be there so come back for part two part two so Jackie the bully spilled fake blood down my back making it look like I had my period and then she announced to everyone that she was gonna to beat me up at lunch and that I better be there. The bell rings and someone tells me that she's waiting for me at the soccer field. My god, I was so scared. Of course, I wasn't planning on going, but three of the girls in my class literally took me by my arms and took me to the soccer field. Gosh, were they mean. And of course, there's a whole audience
audience waiting for me. Jackie was right in the center. As soon as I get there, she starts yelling at me. And you know what I did? I asked her, why do you hate me so much? She actually didn't know what to say. She stayed quiet. So I asked her, what did I do to you? Then she said she saw me on a commercial in our local channel and that it made her really angry. And I said, is that all? Then she said that she didn't like my face either. She starts pushing me backwards. She pushed me a few times and I fell back. She was literally about to kick me when I hear my sister yelling from behind the crowd saying, why don't you pick on someone your own size? The crowd parts and my sister comes through and tells Jackie to leave me alone. Then she tried to kick me again and my sister tackled her to the ground. Come back for part three. Part three, as Jackie the bully is trying to kick me, my sister tackles her to the ground. Well, Jackie got really scared because she was not expecting that. And my sister picks her up from the floor and throws her into a bush. Jackie starts to cry and she says that she's gonna tell on my sister. Well, my sister says, I have all the notes that you've been sending to my sister and we can compare it to your own handwriting. Guess who they'll believe? My sister took me to the principal's office and we gave her all of the notes and I told her everything that happened. So the principal went and searched Jackie's backpack. Guess what she found? Scissors and tape. Jackie confessed that she wanted to tie my hands and cut off all my hair. She got suspended from school for three days. When she came back, her parents took her to my classroom and made her apologize in front of everyone. If you're being bullied, speak up.